Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lila Lil Lex in the box, and I am here at FG3 Fine Art Productions with my boy, Blue, who is the mystery man behind the beautiful, tasting, scrumptious, <laughs> magically delicious shells and tails. <laughs> thank you. You like how I threw you. all that out I there? I like it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, hey, man, you've been killing the game. I want to say congratulations. Thank you. You know, shells and tails is the lick. Thank I'm pulling you. up for crab legs. I'm pull, I'm pulling up for crawfish, all that good seafood. I'm pulling yes. up for, and not only that, I'm pulling up again and again and again. <laughs> all right, so yes. I want to know. Tell us a little bit about shells and tails. You know what? What should the people expect when they pull up? Well, pretty much from shells and tails, you're gonna get your uh, authentic Cajun slash Creole food. Um, you're not going to get your run-in-the-mill uh, seafood that you would get from a lot of these places in this area that is pretty much steamed with seasoning tossed on top. You're going to get the real deal where we season our water and you're not just tasting it on your shell. You're tasting it in your meat, your actual crab legs, your shrimp. You're getting that flavor infused inside of that. So you're going to get the real deal. When you say Louisiana, you think of shells and tails. You don't think of um, any other, other place that's not, quote-unquote, authentic. Ooh. And I'm telling you, he is not lying, y'all. It is in, it's on the meat. It's on, on not the meat. just the shell. Yes. Okay, it's on yes. the meat. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind Shells and Tails. How did you even begin to start like cooking seafood? Why seafood? Well, seafood is kind of a, a staple in Louisiana. Everyone pretty much, for the majority, everyone loves seafood. And that's where you're seafood. from. And that's where I'm from. Yeah. Born and raised in Lafayette, Louisiana. There you go. Um, I graduated college in, in 06 and I moved out to Dallas with no plans to do anything but just have a piece of paper. And I just came out here and just like, I'm just gonna live. So I got into the oil field a few years later. Um, at that time, oil field was booming. Great money, travel the world, you, you're good. Yeah. Then after a while, I was like, okay, I have a kid, I have a wife, I have to do some things different to be involved in my kid's life. So um, I was cooking at home and my friends was always trying my food and it was like, man, this is great, this is great. And I'm like, nah, it's not that good. But then after a while, after, every time I would come home, we'll go and test other restaurants or other little local eateries in the area and it was like, nope, yours is better, yours mm. is better. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm step out on faith and I'm gonna, uh, gonna open up my own food truck. And it was pretty much my main inspiration was to be at home with my family, spend more time. Because in the oil field, I was gone nine to ten months out of the year. Wow. So I didn't spend that much time with them. I'm, I come home, I'm making money, but I can't spend the, the real time I want to spend with them. You exactly, know? exactly. So um, I was like, yes, I want to be with my family. So I was like, let me create this. And I just jumped out on faith. Yes. So what was your leap of faith? What was your leap of faith? Um, my leap of faith was, like I said before, people were saying how good, my friends and family were saying how good my food was, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to just jump out there. But I didn't jump out there head first. Mm -hmm. I just kind of did a lot of research while I was out there in the oilfield, because we do have a lot of free time, you know. Uh -huh. So I did a lot of research, Googling prices on this, that, um, seeing how much licenses cost, permits, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Um, doing the research of the demographic of that area yes. because I didn't want to go into an area that wasn't built for or didn't have a need for great seafood. And I wanted to be around our people. Yes. So, and DeSoto was a great place. Um, I pretty much took my 401k. I took all the money I had in the bank and I just said, I'm going to purchase this, 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 this because I didn't want to owe anyone because right. I didn't want to be in debt because i seen a lot of other businesses that I've done research on uh, a couple of years. They're in debt because they took out a loan right. or because they just thought they needed this, this, and that. And I didn't want to be that person. So I pretty much took my own money and just went out and purchased everything cash. And I just prayed about it and just went out there and didn't know what was going to happen. Um, it was scary. The first year was very scary. Tell us a little um, bit about that. Oh, man. I'm and talking. when was the first year? How long have you been in business? It's going to be five years, April 2nd. All right. Yes, coming up on our right, five years. Right, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us about that first year. Yes, that first year was very scary. Um, 
didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I major in business administration, so I kind of used some of that education to help me do a lot, a lot of things as far as the business part. Um, I'm not a quote unquote trained chef by uh, like culinary school or what have not, but I'm a trained chef, you know, like at home. Right, know? right. So um, I was pretty much learning as I, I went. Um, it was days where we had two or three people show up out of a three-day period, I mean, out of a three, four-hour window. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't know if it was going to kick off. Of course, your family and friends are going to support you immediately. So you think, oh, I'm, I'm booming. I've got 15 people here. I'm, I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah. But then after your friends and family get your food, you're kind of like, okay, where are the real customers at? Mm-hmm. You know. And that's when we kind of um, didn't know if it was going to make it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, crazy part is, I was so frustrated and I knew I could go back to the oil field at any time because it was money there and I had made a name there and a good career. Mm-hmm. Um, I put my food truck up for sale twice within the food first year. Wow. Yes. I was ready to give it up because the previous six years I had stability. You know, my family was taken yeah. care of. We're taking great vacations. And now I'm at the point where we ain't taking vacations. We're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. We can't, you know, I have to save every money I get and mm-hmm. earn to put back into the business. So right. pretty much my wife pretty much supported me during that time. And um, we made it through that first year. And um, our, our breakthrough was the second year. Nice. Our se- second year was a breakthrough year. Um, and it was crazy because it was with the help of local radio station. Mm-hmm. Um, we went there um, the morning time and didn't know what we was getting involved in. Mm-hmm. I brought some samples, some gumbo, some shrimp, some crabs, you know, let them taste it or whatever. And we got on the air, didn't know at all what I was doing, just talking, saying what we had. Yeah. They loved it. Uh, the ad, I, I guess the ad or the commercial bit went out that morning and mm-hmm. we had no idea. And just all of a sudden, the floodgates opened. Yes. It was just like, People just started coming just by talking on the radio. Um, Nina, who you had an interview with yes, recently. Yes, my girl Nina. <laughs> we, we, we met her at the radio station because she was working as well. And come to find out, we went to the same high school. Wow. Ten-year gap. It's a ten-year gap. Uh-huh. And I had no idea. And she knew pretty much everyone that I knew back home, friends, families, and everything. And she was working at the radio station. And it just so happened it it merged with each other and of course you know Nina's a, a, a great person and yes. she's very lively. Yeah. And um <laughs> after that everything just opened up as mm-hmm. far as um our marketing elevated. Um I stayed on top of the marketing. That's yeah. one thing you have to stay on. You have to push your product like mm-hmm. like people push Nikes or Jordans or whatever. Exactly. You have to push your product. And I stayed on it every day. I was posting a, a Facebook, Instagram post maybe three or four times a day. Yeah. I was like on it. I was interacting with the customers. Mm-hmm. I was talking to them. I'm seeing what I could have changed, what I could do better, what I need to take away, anything. I was mm-hmm. taking every bit of feedback and I was kind of honing it in and trying to make myself and the, the business better. Well, hey, I, I just want to say that you did just that. You know, you did that. You stuck to it and then you know, the right people just came, you yes. know, it's all faith. Yes. And so I'm super proud of you. So Thank congrats you. again. You. Congrats, Thank congrats. You. Now, now it's been five years in the game, right? Yes. So what do we need to know before we pull up the shelves and tell? Give me three things. Three things. Three things. <laughs> get her, get there early. The earlier, the better, because you can get in and out. There you go. You wait until rush time. Let's say on a weekday, you wait till... 4.35 o'clock, mm-hmm. it might be a 30, 45 minute wait while you're in line. But once you order, your food will be coming out five to 10 minutes most times. Um, but if we sometimes we do get backed up because quote unquote, we're not a full fledged restaurant. So we don't have the space that other restaurants do have. Right. So sometimes we do get backed up because we're just a food truck and we only can do so much in a food truck. So please bear with us at times, but you're gonna get your food hot and fresh every time mm-hmm. that's a guarantee <laughs> and if you have any problem you come back and tell us hey this is it wasn't what that's it was real. we take care of you we that's take real. customer service like very seriously um i don't care how good your food is if your customer service sucks we don't we don't rock like that 
we are not coming back. Yeah, we're not coming back. And I'm, <laughs> I'm a customer at many other places, so customer service is always key. So yes. we try to make our customer service A1, mm -hmm. so that way you do come back and our food is going to pair with the A1 Come on, come service. on. So number one is we need to come early. Come early. Number two. Number two, know your food is going to be fresh and hot, so okay. be, pre be prepared to order it. And number three, come back. And number three, come <laughs> back. That's simple. That's, that's easy. That's it. That's, that's easy. That's yes. it, y'all. That's it. Well, I just want to say congratulations. Thank you for taking the time out because I know you're such a busy man. No problem. You know, and the fact that you are balancing being a dad, being a businessman, being yes. a husband, it's just, I love to see it. Yes. I love to Thank see you. it. Thank you. I do appreciate it. I know... Um, Within the next few months to, let's say, six months to a year, we will be expanding. I wanted to ask you about that. We yeah. talking storefronts here? Well, somewhat of a storefront. Okay. Let's just say it's going to be a storefront slash food truck-ish. We like that. Can we dine in? Yes, you will. Oh, because you know I'm yes, ready to pop them crab legs yes. open as soon as yes. I get them. But I got to wait till I get to the, to the car at least, yes. you know, you won't be, or to the house. Yeah. Right now, because of COVID, uh, we do have benches outside that you can yes. eat outside if you have the time. So you can stay out there and eat if the weather is nice. But with it, like I said, within the next couple of months to slash a year, maybe not even that long, you're going to have a place where you can dine in. You can get some drinks, alcohol, beverages, Whoa. 21 and up, hey. uh, <laughs> some live music on the weekend. And it's just not going to be just us there. We're going to have other minority businesses that's going to be there to yes. to help create a better environment, to help get their names out and stuff like that. So we're going to have um, pretty much a revolving food truck park type thing. I think that yes. is incredible. Yes. Now, are we going to be still at the same location in DeSoto or are we going to be moving around a little bit? We're going to be, <laughs> we're going to, hopefully we're going to be in the DeSoto area, but not necessarily the same location, but within, within the two or three mile radius. So oh, okay. we won't be far from where you're coming at now, which is 324 East Beltline in DeSoto, but we're not going to be far. We're going to be real close. So we're in DeSoto is not that big. It's probably mm -hmm. six square miles total. Um, so we're going to be within the vicinity, so you're going to be able to, trust me, it'll be out on social media, so follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Instagram is my baby. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram a lot, so if you have any questions, concerns, you can DM us, and we'll respond back to you as best, as fast as we can. Just, just know during our business hours, we just can't answer every question, but usually at the end of the day, I'll answer questions or early in the morning. Um, same thing with your emails. Um, I try to get back as much as I can, but we're still a mom and pop operation. So we're not like these corporate giants that have someone staying doing all right. their emails. So we, we, for now, but we do try to uh, get back to every single person. I try to be very personal with everyone. Yeah. Um, we welcome anyone, any walks of life, any cultures, whoever wants to come, we welcome them all. We partnered up with several different businesses. We try to keep everything local yeah. as far as our, our products. Um, our crawfish come from, strictly from Louisiana. Fresh. From lo local farmers. Uh, Fresh. We don't have anything that's frozen like that as far as our crawfish is concerned. Um, so we do try to make everything local, locally based. So yeah. we want to share everything we do with our friends and families, other minority businesses. We try to help them out and they try to help us out. So it's like one hand washes the other. Mm -hmm. So my, my biggest thing is together we win. And that's yes. with everyone, men, women, black, white, Hispanic, mm -hmm. whoever, we all win if we work together in some kind of way. And I'm going to tell you this, it's the support for me. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's yes. the support for me. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations, Blue. Thank you. Congratulations. Y'all go check out Shells and Tails. He dropped the address. I'm going to drop it for you again. All right. And uh, we need that crab munch, that cra that cra that Cajun, Cajun munch. Cajun munch. Yes, yes. We need all that. We need right, all that. Right? Yes. We need all that. So yes. thank you so much. I'm Lil Lil Lex in the box. This is Blue. All right.